Okay, so why did we come to? Children free. Just made a coconut um, drink. El Shazai, El Aliona Donai. Do, 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 do. Anyway, let's get back to it. Um, just made a coconut thing with this some um, essentials oils, less less powerful than yesterday, just to get a little in. Mm. Just to get a little I I must say yesterday I must have, you know, by taking the you know uh, the essential oils uh before actually, you know, drinking the the coconut thing. I uh, probably have, you know, my taste buds product probably already had been overloaded. But anyway, it's a uh, taste actually pretty good. It tastes differently, but it does taste pretty interesting. Um, but I put, you know, the same things that I put last time, but less. <laughs> I was too much, you know, and hopefully I should probably not do this, but, you know, whatever. Um, I should probably have waited a, a day more or whatever, but now I've made it and I'm going to drink it. And if I'm going to feel bad again, you know, or if going to in a, into a period where I don't feel so well, okay. But anyway, um, it's an experience, you know, um, but yeah, if one could keep it at a point where you don't get into too many issues, right? That's the best thing. Um, but yeah, so that's peppermint, you know, the geranium and oregano oil. Of course, I know that already. I've used that. And uh, so I have a little, you know, a little experience with that. And then, of course, the thyme oil as well in it. And instead of putting five, <laughs> I tried to put like two in into it, which might actually still be too much. Uh, <laughs> I really, you know, uh, it's, it's really actually really hard if you're actually fixing drops and all that if you just want one drop and all that. Um, I took four peppermint drops in it this time, and uh, so um, still, it's uh, it's interesting because I have issues with butter, but actually, it seems like it's only cow butter, and I don't know why. Um, when I'm mostly eating meat and all that, and, uh, you know, if you're eating too much fat, that can make you go on the toilet, which of course is very sad because you're throwing money down the waste. Uh, I, I, I don't know, you know, I think, I think sadly the body might not then take all the nutrients that are in the food before it, it casts us out. Of course, it might be a positive thing in regards of cleaning out your, you know, um, but I found out that butter really, really make a very bad reaction uh, to me while I'm eating a lot of meat, red meat, and that you don't actually need to use much before you actually end up on the toilet. So sometimes they have goat, uh, goat butter in the store down there and they had goat butter. So I bought two of them and I've tried goat butter and I guess I'll need to try to use more and see, you know, I, I think I try to use, a, you know, a, a good amount and I haven't seen any reaction from it. So, I, you know, I was a little careful in regards of it, but I'm like, okay, that doesn't seem to have any, you know, happened anything like, you know, um, where you get the diarrhea and all that. So I do wonder if there's something in the cow bottle that does it. So maybe I can, of course, in regards to the goat bottle, there's still a slightly sense of sugar. There's 0 0.5 grams of sugar in, in goat bottle, which I guess is probably the pretty much the same as in, in cow bottle, which is 0 0.6. Now, in regards of taste, I pretty much don't like goat bottle so much, but, uh, you know, at least it's better than nothing, right? Um, 
I guess it's something to get used to because in our society, we don't have so much in regards of goats and sheep and all that. So I guess it's something that you just need to get accustomed to, like eating sheep, you know. I've pretty much gotten more used to that now than I was in the past, for sure. And uh, But it's interesting to see maybe it actually is the is the you know the butter uh, from cows that is the issue then the question becomes is it only you know is it as is that difference between the different bottles out there you know i i i'm having a butter that shouldn't really be you know a problem I, you know it should be the one of the healthiest butters out there in regards of cows uh, you know, ecology, ecology, what do you call it? A what do you, I don't know. But apparently, it, you know, it, it doesn't take much for you to actually get the diarrhea and it actually can go on for, uh, you know, just a good amount of, of time, actually. Um, so, uh, so now trying the goat butter and I'm seeing that it doesn't seem like I'm getting the same reaction. So this time in the morning here, I actually made some meat, you know, at breakfast and all that. That's, you know, meat and all that. And I used some goat butter for the pan. And then afterwards I put more goat butter on the meat. And I haven't seen any reaction at all from it. So I'm thinking maybe I should try even more and see if I get any reaction at all. Uh, I still need to, to cut this, uh, whatever, you know. Whatever is just visible, visible, right? Uh, visual. Uh, Anyway, um, if that is the case, of course, I just need to buy, you know, butter from sheep uh, or figure out if there's if, if it's specific, uh, specific butters that I seem to have problems with or if it's, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But apparently, you know, again, I don't really goat butter doesn't taste as good as cow butter. But if it doesn't make you go to the toilet, then I'm all for the goat butter, you know. Um, and sadly, they only have it like times here and there and all that. Um, maybe they will make it more, you know, and it's, it's more expensive as well. But overall, if it doesn't make me go to the toilet, you know, then it will be well spent anyway, you know, because it won't just, you know... Um, so I still have some testing here and there in regards to that, but I, I don't know what would be in the cow butter that would, uh, anyway, that's, um, uh, um, uh, so that's interesting. Just an observation, uh, cause you can use a lot of time trying to figure out here and there and all that. It's very annoying because we have a society that is so wicked and destroying our food sources and all that. I guess goats are probably, you know, of course, goats can pretty much eat anything and everything. Uh, it's like an incredible animal that just eats, yeah, pretty much everything. <laughs> I was like, anyway, the essential oils showed antifungal activity on candida species. Uh, tested with MIC, you know, minimum uh, inhibitory concentration of 90 uh, values ranging from 0.8 to 800 milligrams of L, uh, I think it's a liter in minus first. In general, the most active essential oils were El nobilis and so that would be uh, Laurus nobilis, which I have no idea what is, and Thymus vulgaris. MIC 90, 0 0.6 to 0 0.16 MG. Uh, leader minus minus the first and the least act active was candida of fish or I don't know if it's candida but you know that's nothing in regards of but actually was candida officinalis but it doesn't seem like it would be a candida what no it actually says candida crucia afterwards so it must be candida alfi Sinalis, uh, MIC, 90, 400 to 800 milligrams per liter minus the first. Uh, Candida crucia uh, was inhibited by five to six of the essential oils evaluated. Uh, and Candida glabrata was the least sub 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 susceptible one. Thus, in vitro study confirms the antifungal activity of these six 
essential oils, a sate, uh, which could be a potential source of new molecules useful to control fungal infections caused by some candida species, including those resistant to antifungal drugs. And again, that it, it makes sense because, you know, again, plant, the, the enemy of plant is fungi, pretty much. Uh, well, we have mentha perita, which is apparently then also antifungal. So that would be mint. And that's nice because I love mint, you know. Thymus vulgaris, I know what that is now. No idea what Laurus nobilis, but that was said to be pretty powerful as well. Again, one, one thing is, of course, can you actually take them internally? That's the thing. Because if you have systemic fungal infection and you are only to use it outside the body, now, of course, some of it might actually be taken up by the skin, I guess, if you're actually uh, using it on your skin. As uh, said to be the, the biggest organ we have is the skin. And if I remember correctly, the skin can both absorb and release things. So, um, yeah. How that works totally in, you know, things and all that, I don't know. But uh, here we have uh, Candida species. And we have now uh, Campopogon citratus is apparently one of the essential oils it must be. Uh, Laurus nobilis, Libia unaliana, and Mentha peperita, and Thymus vulgaris. And Thymus vulgaris is, again, the herb that we, I guess, all know and that can be eaten. So if the herb can be eaten, the, the oil should be able to be eaten as well. You know, of course, again, being much more powerful in regards to the oil, we have to be careful not to overtake things and all that but the good thing also with the essential oils is there's no sugar in it so we're not feeding the fungi by taking them so so if one can just find the things that you can actually take internally of of essential oils um and uh without you know having a negative thing and all that um and then one could rotate them or mix them together or whatever, you know, um, you know, to, to help you to stay away from a fungal infection naturally, you know, it's better to, what is it called? It's better to, um, what is it called? Um, it's better to not get it than to get it and then need to fight it, right? Uh, what is it called? That is a word for it. That is better to, you know, no, what is it? I can't remember the word, but, uh, you know, it's better to to not get the thing, right? Uh, and, and, and what is it called? Uh, what is it called, that word? Uh, it's better to, hmm. I don't know the, I, I can't remember the word. But it's, it's better to just, you know, not get it right in the first place. Because if you get it and all that and it grows out of hand, it will be harder to get it under control than to actually just, you know, make sure you don't get it in the first place. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the real, you know, the big, big best, you know, the, the word for it. That, um, But yeah, and um, if one can, what is it called? Oh. I should know the word, you know, uh, it is better to, to, what uh, to, oh my, it's better to, oh, I know the word, I just don't remember it at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely better to, to, to not get it and uh, then to get it and then need to fight it off. And, you know, it might kill you actually. Uh, fungi is a serious thing. So if one could just put, you know, have something in the diet that would work as a medicine, you know, let your diet be your medicine, right? And uh, just do that daily, like having a good diet uh, that helps the body to protect itself against all these buggers and, uh, yeah, and kill them off before they begin to, you know, control them so they're not going haywire in your body so yeah i guess that's pretty much it 
Uh, yeah, I can, you know, it's I can feel that I'm getting some more essential oils in. Hopefully I don't get too bad in regards of it. I guess over time, the body will also accustom itself to these uh, remedies. Like the fungi can accustom it to uh, these antifungal remedies, apparently. Uh, oh, a, lot, a lot of them where it's just, you know, um, you know, become resistance to, 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 to them. Um, there's something called Mithra Daism or something like that. And that's actually taking small doses of poison to become resistance to it. Um, and it's have its name from a false pagan god. Um, but the idea is to, you know, you take small enough doses of poison that usually kills you um, to become accustomed to the poison and thereby the body over time becomes resistant to it. Um, so you don't die if you take a bigger dose of it because... You know, the body, you know, apparently can now, um, I'm thinking like if some of the things that might not be so good for, you know, you know, I'm thinking maybe the body can also, you know, it should be able to, you know, also, uh, so if, you, if you're taking like different antifungals and, you know, even if it's some kind of a so-called poison, I wonder if the body, you know, according to Mithra is, Mithra Daism, I think it's called, um, you should actually become be able to become resistant to it. Now, apparently, it doesn't work with everything out there, according to some of the things that I've read. But um, you know, to say it's <coughs> oh my, I guess I might have cast cast what do you call it? cast 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 something? What do you call it? cast cast? Cast, cash, cash, cash. I mean, you know, I might have gotten something, you know, regards of uh, uh, some kind of. Um, so, but anyway, uh, I guess that's you get that sometimes, right? But, uh, um, yeah. So, but I'm like, okay. So if it's actually antifungal, and you could make like a pretty great antifungal thing, then uh, you know. Anyway, still, you know, there's still things going on in my breast and all that. You know, it's interesting uh, to follow along, of course. Now, I'm not afraid of it, you know, in regards of getting these, you know, noodle things, whatever, you know, that's hard and all that. Because I know it's because the fungi have some problems, you know. Um, so, I'm not sure if the fungi is regrouping or something like that in my breast. But, uh, like, in the side of my uh, left breast, you know, you have I've had some really... You know, good, uh, what do you call it? You know, where you can feel like, oh, that's hot. You know, it's a hot. And I'm thinking like maybe like, for example, here, that's, that's one of them. And uh, it's like, a, you can really feel like it's, a, you know, but, you know, of course, the, if the fungi have problems, you know, uh, it might just be a, a problem, you know, where the fungi is regrouping in the body, trying to defend itself. Uh, because out of the sudden, you know, there's one attack after another against it, and uh, it might have been losing a lot of grounds, and thereby, you know, they seem to be pretty intelligent, and uh, but uh, and have a lot of ways of. Uh, it's incredible this beast, you know. I have no idea how they're working, you know, but they are working as they are doing. It's like an intelligent beast, you know, um, and uh, they have many ways of of, uh, you know, hiding, attacking you, uh, attacking the immune system. And, and it's just incredible how many ways they have of, it's just a, a terrible beast, you know. Uh, so, although I, I don't know why, but I, I'm looking at fungus, you know, it's just interesting. Not the fungi in the forest and all that, but fungi on people and all that I, f I i don't know why but i find some kind of interest you know it's interesting you know it's just uh i don't think it's uh disgusting or you know it looks disgusting right but i find that intriguing in some way i don't i don't know why you know it's like uh, i hate blood you know every in regards of blood i'm just totally but in regards of fungi i i seem to have the opposite uh it's effect, you know, I can, I can really feel bad in regards of blood and all that. I'm really not, 
oh, you know, it gets terrible. I feel, I feel very bad. Uh, just speaking about it and all that can really get me into a mode of really, really fe feeling sick <laughs> in some sense. But fungi has a has a more intriguing nature, I must say. And I don't know, it's interesting. Um, so looking at the pictures where people have fungi and all that, right? It's it's, it's interesting. Uh, and of course, it might seem disgusting, but it's, it's I find it interesting. I don't know why, but it's just... Uh, of course, that's a pretty good thing when you're actually trying to fight something like that, right? Um, so, yeah. But yeah, overall, my arms are pretty much the worst. I don't know if one can see it with the camera, but all the... All the... Yeah, you can, you maybe, maybe I need to, all those, all those spots you see there, I got them from when it began to go out in my arms. And, you know, I never had these spots. And I know people say, oh, these are just natural spots and all that because others have them. But there was something coming after uh, it went out in the arms. And after it's the explosion, it just, you know, and not only on the arms, it just, Every single day, I could just, you know, every single day after the explosion, I could just see, you know, more and more spots. They were just, you know, growing and on, on my leg and all that. And, you know, on my stomach, it, you know, spots, you know, and arms, of course, and all that. I could pretty much see differences in my face from one day to another. You know, after the explosion, I could just see, you know, things in my face that hadn't been there before and uh, up here as well. Um, it's, hard, it's, it's really hard to actually see, but uh, at least on the camera and all that. But anyway, I could see from one day to another, you know, and of course I could feel it as well because it was itching and it was, you know, it's just very, very, very awful. And it was just, you know, it was, my head was pressing. It felt like it was pressing from the inside and out and it was itching and it was crawling and it was just terrible, utterly terrible. And uh, so from one day to the other, you know, I just, you know, I got all the, you know, I, I it was just, it was a mess. Um, so, but I guess at least some, there's something to see at least now in regards of, uh, at least the doctors have something to look at in regards of good, because, you know, they, they just thought I was, was, um, what do we call it? They thought, you know, they thought I was in, in, you know, outstanding health or whatever, you know, like, uh. And, you know, every time coming up to these, you know, they misdiagnosed me or whatever and told me there was nothing wrong or, uh, you know, they're incompetent. I, I used 19 years to figure out what it was and now I'm battling it. 19 years. And of course, after the explosion, it became even more because the, you, you have this people are just trying to make it, you know, put it in your head. That it's just all in your head, you know? Oh, it's just all in your head. It's just, you're just, you know, making things up or something like that. You just, you know, and, and then you begin to think that maybe it is me that is something wrong, you know? Maybe it's just, you know, and and uh, one of the reasons why I didn't go to my doctor in regards of when I broke my knuckle was because, you know, oh, you know, uh, I guess, you know, and I, I didn't really think it was broken anyway, uh, but... One of the reasons why, you know, of course, all the bad experience I've had with doctors anyway didn't, you know, deter me from also going there. But, you know, you, you begin to think, oh, maybe it's just all in my head, right, in regards of... Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, it was kind of painful, but, you know, it's... You know, of course, you get used to pain when you have fungus. And, of course, that's different kinds of pain. And some, some pains are easier to, you know, some pains you, you know, tend to... You know, you know, but again, but anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, so I just, you know, maybe it's just me, you know, you know, I'll just, you know, it's, it's anyway, uh, so, so you get into this thing that you think, oh yeah, maybe the, maybe the people are right. Maybe it's just all in my mind. Right. And, and yes, you see all these, you know, things going on. You can feel something is wrong. You can. And yet you have the whole society and the doctors and the, you know, everybody, you know, just, just, uh, you know, you just, you just need to go out and work or whatever, you know, um, uh, you know, and yeah, you feel how they, but they don't, they don't really believe you, you know, uh, so, um, you're pretty much on your own and that took 19 years to, to, um, to at least find out what it is. 
Um, it could have been, you know, I could have turned this around very easily in the past. Very easily. Um, I, f I think I could have turned it around. But the, with the things that I know now, if I could go 19 years back, but of course I can't. But if I could, I could have turned this around very easy. Um, and that's very sad to know that that it wasn't it, it probably was not that hard to actually turn the boat around in regards to having 19 years of suffering that if I just could have gone back and told myself that you know you can do this this and this you know do this this is this and you know I could probably have flipped the boat around very easily and now after 19 years it has rooted itself on you know very harsh and I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if I can, you know, uh, overcome this. But, uh, you know, Funkus kills a lot of people, you know. Uh, but it is seemingly going in the right direction. But who knows, you know. Um, it could be a lot worse, I guess. But you never know if something, you know, if, I, if something is, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, scratching on a wall and a little and a little and a little of the wall goes down, you know, uh, just, you know, so that's, that's, you know, and 19 years on, on, of that. It's, uh, the itching, the, uh, so many weird symptoms, you know, um, the itching was pretty much the, the primary thing. That was what it pretty much began with. Um, uh, downstairs and it was just horrible and um, and that's actually interesting because uh, I've actually had pretty rest on that you know not that of course the, the diet also helps a lot you know red meat red meat if you only eat red meat you know that's something that can actually help in that now of course after the explosion I have a huge amount of other things you know and of course I still had it in my breast for some times you know it always like down from here under the ribs and it was like a, okay, that's two seconds. Oh, uh, well, I wonder who that, hello? Yes? Oh, it's a package. Oh, okay, I'll be right back. I was thinking, do I actually expect something? Yeah, maybe I do actually. Maybe there are some DVDs from the US. Oh, let's see. So, okay, so I'm back. I got a letter from uh, from the US. Ah, that's interesting. I wonder if, you know, I, I don't read, uh, hmm, hmm. Anna D. Erickson. I guess that must be English or something like that. D, I think it's a D anyway. Anyway, it, at least it came, uh, you know, at least it's a, uh, so D, I'm not sure if it's a C, the erection, I don't know. Maybe it's a H, hmm, interesting. Uh, great. And, yep, yeah. oh well, it should be in regards of Noah's Ark. Those would be interesting, very, DVDs, except your nose would be very interesting, you know? I wonder, I guess, you know, some, yeah, that's interesting. Let's see what it is. Oh, I, I have forgotten actually that, you know, I was like, you know, okay, great. Uh, did I get a mail on uh, some, usually they, ooh, there we go. There we go. 
We have, we have um, the Ark of the Covenant from Ark Bonema. Bonema, I think it's Bonema. Bon and Noah's Ark, Ark Bonema. And he went to Iran to look for the uh, both of Noah and uh, and uh, you know they found some things and all that and was very interesting and I think that's much more possible than the Ark being in Turkey you know that that's pretty much two places that people you know the main things that they believe where it is and I you know I could be wrong and all that but I think Ark uh, Bonama and their team uh, it's much closer to the truth than the boat in Turkey. Um, I don't, uh, you know, so that's at least, you know, in regards to the research that I've done. Um, Don Patton, I think, believes the boat is in Turkey, but he believes it's another place that the thing that they have found is not the boat, um, you know, and um, in regards of, but he believes it actually is uh, Some place on the, but yeah. Anyway, um, but Ach Bonema and and the team they went to Iran, and that you know the Bible says they came from the east. And all these questions that I had in regards of you know research, I think in the past years, a couple of years ago when I researched it, and I had a lot of problems in regards of you know the Bible and in regards to the Turkey boat and all that, I was looking at all the evidence and all that. And there seems to be a lot of historical things and all that. And uh, I used a lot of time on, 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 on that subject and I couldn't just couldn't, I just couldn't, you know, I was thinking, you know, um, I think I came to the conclusion of like, you know, East, you know, that's more like Iran. And I, I might have been the way that I actually found him in regards to searching for Iran and Noah's boat or something like that. Whatever the case, I did find him and he's speaking about the things that I, you know, had issues with and all that. And it just makes so much sense, you know. So this is a guy. Um, it's wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. Um, that will be interesting to see. That's actually, you know, perfect because this is the day of preparation. So this will be great for the Sabbath, um, beginning at sunset. Um, so yeah, two DVDs, you know, that, that would be interesting. Yeah, it might be a great, great, great thing to, uh, to, to look at. Yeah, I know my t-shirt is upside down, you know, whatever. Um, it still works, okay? <laughs> I just, I, I haven't cared to just turn it around. Um, but yeah, that was interesting, interesting. That's nice, awesome, awesome. Um, so the, I can't remember the guy that came with it. I got his name, but I lost it again. Sulfi, it's an interesting name. Um, oh yeah, I forgot it already, you yeah. know. That will be interesting. Um, the thing is, you know, when you have the truth, it's, it's easier to just, you know, it's easier to... So, you know, when you research things and all that, it can take a lot of time. And the same thing with fungi and all that, you know. But uh, there are other people out there researching things and finding out things. And, you know, uh, it's wonderful. And uh, oh, we have a problem here. That's a mistake, apparently. Oh, okay. I uh, deleted something. Uh oh, I wonder if it actually did download it again. Um, I'm trying to, you know, some Protestant videos and all that. I must say I'm not in totally in, in agreement, but of course we have to remember this is the beginning of uh, things. In regards to works, you know, works, you know. Um, you know, the, the works of the devil, right? And then there's the works of God, right? You know. Yes, you're saying he comes back to give us according to our works, right? So, um, so apparently there are some works, you know, uh, in, in regards of, anyway, um, yeah. Any case, um, but why are we going? We're going in regards of essential oils, I guess. Um, there's probably a lot more information in regards of these essential things, uh, essential oils. Um, oh my, come on, don't, don't, 
don't do these things to me. There we go. Um, yeah. If I can find the, the, those, you know, essential oils that it's just, you know, that you can take internally against systemic uh, candida and all that, and, uh, you know, are not poisonous or such and all that, you know, that would be great. Here we have effect of glove and uh, and thyme in essential oils on candida biofilm formation and the oil distribution in yeast cells. And uh, what do they have here? Is, do they have anything? Uh, abstract. Uh, candida bio biofilm structure is particularly difficult to eradicate. Since biofilm is much more resistant to antifungal agents than planktonic cells, not sure what that is, but anyway, uh, in this context, I guess it must be cells that are not, you know, don't have the the thing. In this context, a more effective strategy seems to be the prevention of biofilm formation from its eradication. The aim of the study was to examine whether the process of initial colonization of materials, glass, polyethylene, terephthalate, polypropylene, by foodborne candida species, by foodborne, foodborne, okay, foodborne, oh, okay, in regards to food, okay, by foodborne candida species can be embedded by glove and thyme essential oils, used as their minimal inhibitory concentrations in the presence of glove oil, 68.4 to 84.2 percent of the yeast tested showed a statistically significant reduction in biofilm formation and the biofilm is what protects the fungus uh, depending on the material after treatment with thyme oil statistically significant decrease in biofilm cells were observed for 63.2 to 73.7 percent of the yeast confocal laser scanning microscopy showed diverse compounds of glove and thyme oils that were disparately located in candida albicans cells on the, on the cell wall and cell membrane, in cytoplasm and in vacuolus, depicting the multidirectional action of essential oils. However, essential oils that were used in sub-inhibitory concentration were sequestrated in the yeast vacuolus which indicate the activation of candida defense mechanism by cell detoxification. Glow and thyme essential oils due to the anti-biofilm activity can be efficiently used in the prevention of the tested abiotic surface colonization by candida species. Hmm. Didn't really get much out of it in regards of, of how effective it was, but anyway. Um, Uh, we have investigation of antifungal activity and mode of action of thymus vulgaris and citrus limonum, pelagonium, graveolans, and cinnamon, casia, that's cinnamon, in regards of the so called dangerous cinnamon, uh, or simum, basilicum, and eo. Oh, yeah, there was something in regards of basilicum as well, in regards of. Oil, which is also a herb, if I remember correctly. Um, that might be something interesting to look into as well. Of course, also black seed oil. I really want to try that as well. And there was some something else as well. I don't. I didn't really find any black seed oil yesterday. I don't think the Danish company have them, but of course the shop might actually have black seed oil anyway. I just didn't find it. It's like one of these health shops that have, you know, um, they actually did have some, a little information in regards to the different oils, and but not really in regards to the information that I, but you know, better than nothing. Um, so, 
here we have investigation of the antifungal activity and mode of action of thymus val vulgaris oh okay that was actually okay we, okay yeah that was uh, the same thing okay let's push it and see what we have <laughs> so the antimicrobial activity of plant oils and extracts has been recognized for many years and they study the oh yeah i know doc kaufman had like a book on on these natural things as well that would of course be of interest um you know uh yeah and they study the activity of thymus vulgaris and that is regards of thyme citrus limonum pelagonium gravel olens and cinnamomum casia that's the you know so-called dangerous cinnamon that is According, you know, to, to some people, not real cinnamon and all that bullshit. Anyway, Arsimum basilicum, and that's probably in regards to basilicum, the herb, I think. And that might be, um, so that might be another herb that might be interesting to use um, for flavor of the coconut thing, you know, of the coconut milk. Um, you know, I, I can... You know, I can really see that there's, you know, the. It seems like the. What it, it's it's only the imagination that will that will, uh, be the. You know the the you know there's uh, show, what is it called um only be the imagination that sets sets the limit for for using uh essential oils in this coconut uh, drink thing, um. It's it's uh yeah. It's a great foundation and hopefully people will pick it up and begin to, you know, um, instead of drinking soda pops or alcohol and all that, you know, if you just change the soda pops or all these, you know, things of with, with coconut milk, uh, with essential oils, with antifungal things and all that, you know, you already have exchanged what is unhealthy for something that is actually health promoting and you know, and it actually, you know, tastes pretty good as well. And again, the I'm sure, you know, one could try different things. And essential oils last a long time um, because they're so powerful. So um, even if they are kind of expensive, they do last a good amount of time. Um, let's see, it was investigated or so. Let's see, yeah. Um, O. C. Mom Basilicum and E. G. E. G. N. I. A. Caryophyllis essential oils distributed by Polena Aroma Nova Dua Masoviki Poland was investigated against a group of 183 clinical isolates of Candida albicans, and that's the thing you know you, you in inside Candida albicans you find different variations of them apparently. Um, again, different kinds of resistance, even if it's the same Candida albicans. And 73 isolates of Candida glabrata. All of the oils exhibited both fungistatic, and that means to stop the fungi, and fungicidal means to kill the fungi, activity uh, towards Candida albicans and Candida glabrata isolates. Hmm. So, you know, fung fungi means, of course, fungus, and sidle means to, you know, kill it. Um, static means to stop. Um, as far as I remember, you know, again, I'm a little rusty because I've had some break from it. The highest activity was observed for cinnamon oil with minimum inhibitory concentration values in the range of 0 0.002 to 0 0.125% and V. Uh, v, I'm not sure what the VV is. Um, uh, is that in regards of vitro or whatever? I don't know. Vitro, vitro, in vitro. Anyway, I don't know. Um, but there we go with the cinnamon oil and what, what the cinnamon oil from what cinnamon moon cashier. And if I go look on the cinnamon I have out in my, in my, uh, uh kitchen. See if I can find anything here. It should probably say uh, if it has the the Latin word of it. No, it doesn't have. Um, this one, this one have only the Danish pretty much. 
Uh, what about... No, I don't have more of that. Maybe I'd thrown that on. No, cinnamon extract powder, honestly. Uh, because that should be from that same cinnamon, but maybe they have the Latin word here. No, no. Hmm. No. No, they don't have that information either. Of course, I could look on the internet in regards of it. Um, interesting that they wouldn't, you know, put the Latin word on it. They, you know, you tend to see it on so many other things, right? Um, oh, well. So, but I would think that Cinnamon Cassia was just be another name for Cinnamon uh, in regards to the Cassia version. So, it's just... You know, you know. Look at the word. You know, it's that cinnamomum. There we go. Cinnamomum. Called Chinese cassia or Chinese cinnamon. There we go. Cinnamon. It's an evergreen tree originating in southern China and widely cultivated and so forward. Um, and as far as I can see from the Bible, it's the cinnamon that is used in the Bible itself and not the so-called real cinnamon. You know, whatever. Um, but of course, there's a lot of warnings in regards to this cinnamon because they tested on some mouse and the mouse got liver cancer. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, of, of course, I don't trust them at all. And there was only one test from Germany and we are not, we are not mouse, okay? Humans are not mouse. And... I wanted some more information. I never heard back from them. And again, maybe I should call them up and say, Hello, this is Dagi Ya from Denmark. I would like to know more about this cinnamon thing in regards of your testing. Do you know of any other testings in regards of this cinnamon casia? And in regards of liver damage, now you tested on mouse, right? So the mouse got liver damage. Now what did you else give the mouse in regards of, did you give them something else than, you know, cinnamon casia? And by the way, humans are not mouse. So, you know, all this bullshit that has happened, you know, um, where they, you know, knock dolls down from uh, bakeries because they're using too much cinnamon. I'll, I'll give me a break. And it might actually be the most healthiest thing that is in the bakery um, because it's antifungal. Yep. Um, so, uh, of course, you know, the so called health uh, food administrations and all that are usually all, you know, again, against all things that is apparently good, you know. I'm running into these people, you know, time and again and again looking for uh, uh, good food sources, you know, uh, and, and you know, that, you know, they're utterly, utterly, um, they're not doing that job. They're doing the opposite of what they should do. Um, they're defending, you know, all the bad foods and, uh, and attacking the good things. And that's just insane. Well, that's how it is, you know. Um, so, so the minimum inhibitory concentration values of the rest of the oils were in the range of 0 0.05 or less or 2 to 0.5%, um, VV, I guess must be in vitro or something like that, vitro vitro. In most cases, MFC, oh, maybe there we go, there we go. In most cases, MFC, the minimum Fungal cytal concentration. There we go. It's a MFC. And I don't know why they're always using the MIC instead of the MFC. Because the MFC seems to be more, more, it's much more, you know, we want to kill it off, right? We don't just want to keep it at a minimum thing, but I guess maybe the doctors, you know, um, take, you know, calculate from there on or whatever. But uh, the MF F MFC seems to be much more uh, a thing that, you know, why wouldn't you use that, you know? The minimum fungicidal concentration, not, not only just inhibiting uh, the fungi, but the minimum, you know, killing of fungi of concentration, the minimum thing you need to use to kill it off. Values were equal to MIC or twice as high. Okay, so... They were either equal to the MIC in regards of the minimum inhibitory concentration or you needed to use a dose that is twice as high as the minimum inhibitory concentration, right? But isn't it much more uh, 
worthy or much more important to actually know the MFC than the MIC, you know, the, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm using the, but isn't, wouldn't it, it be much more important to know the minimum fungicidal concentration than the minimum inhibitory concentration, you know? Uh, I would think so. Because we don't want to just stop the fungi, right? We want to totally annihilate it, you know? We want to totally destroy it, totally obliterate it, totally, you know, smash it out into oblivion. Yeah, anyway, values were equal to MIC or twice as high. Additionally, we examined the mode of actions of selected EOs. What is EOs? Essential oils, okay. Again, doctors love to shorten things and use these big words and all that. Uh, so essential oils, the effect on cell wall components would not be clearly proved. Three of the tested essential oils, thyme, lemon, and glove, affected cell membranes. Actually, you know, again, lemon might be an interesting thing to try as well. And uh, I, I guess the good things about these oils are they're not low on pH either. Um, affect the cell membranes at the same time thyme, cinnamon and globe oil influence potassium ion in efflux which was seen in the case of which was not seen in the case of lemon oil. All of the tested oils demonstrated the ability to inhibit the transition of yeast to mycelium form but the effect was the low but the effect was the lowest in the case of cinnamon oil. So what do we, what do we do? We go out and buy all the six oils, right? And make a and make a drink of coconut milk drink, you know. Anyway, I, I you know of course one would need to check every single of these oils if they are if they are okay to actually ingest. Um, but cinnamon is should be no problem, and and thyme should be no problem, as I understand it. Um, Again, it's a, it's a subject for itself to learn all these essential oils and all that. Um, there are so many and all that, but a little by little, if one begins to use them, you know, I know about glove oil, I know about oregano oil, um, you know, in regards to essential oils, um, that's, I guess, the most, um, that's the best known. Oh, and of course, um, of course, the peppermint. Of course, that's you know that's the that's the one I've used most in my life. Um, but yeah, so so over time you would learn more about these essential oils, and again you could make some. You know, again instead of buying, instead of buying uh, soda pops or or alcohol and all that, just buy a lot of coconut milk and have them and you know and and put some essential oils in them. And again, you could probably make some great combinations like, you know, how easy can it be, you know, to get some different flavors, right? It's, you know, it's like soda pops, right? Yeah, where you have different flavors and you might like to have one flavor over another or whatever. And then you could just do that while you actually get antifungal, you know, things into you. Hmm. I think it's an awesome idea. The thing is, you know, for me, it's like, you know, what can I replace for something good, right? What can I find that can replace it and, you know, use it in my daily life, you know? You know, instead of eating candy, right? What could I replace it with? Gloves, you know? You know, if I have something in regards to wanting to chew on something, you now gloves. Full of antioxidants, phenols, and antibacteria and antifungal and you know so um, you have all these positive in and, and and if you have pain in your mouth so you know um, if you're going to eat those things as well it should also help in regards of your your mouth environment I would think because you're eating things that are antifungal and antibacterial right so if you then can get the nutrition as well, that would be a win-win situation. Now, there are still some things in regards to nutrition that I still have to uh, look into and all that. Mm. Um, yeah. There are some things that are, again, it's hard to get the things that I want because of the, you know, the food administrations are not doing their job and all that. So... Uh, 
Yeah, it's disgusting. Anyway, I should really make a letter again, man, of course, and get it out there where I can get some concentrated and think before I, and just get it out there. Anyway, I should probably stop now and do something else. I have a lot of other things to do. But nice, nice that I got the, in regards to the boat of Noah, in regards of Iran, and it fits much, much better than, uh, than, uh, yeah, since you know, and then then the boat in Turkey, as far as it goes. Also, talk with the. Uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't talk much about that, but anyway, they con they they confirmed that they had heard the same thing. I was very really interesting from an official source. Um, hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, they might not, you know. But anyway, that was very interesting as well, and uh, I was giving some. Um, some links on another language which i need to check out in regards of if i can uh, uh if if google can decipher these and all that again there's so many subjects and all that so many things to do and actually also i still need to get to the library with my books it's really disgusting that i haven't really uh it's way way overdue that i have these books and it's just it's just I never, I've never been so late with any, but I just, you know, that was, I, I just went downhill on that. I really need to fix that. Um, so anyway, uh, anyway, have a good one, all of you. May Jehovah be with you and Yeshua be a most precious pearl and the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth being us all, the comforter uh, who comforts us in uh, when there's, uh, anyway, have a good one. Shalom, all of you.